Wow. Tell me about yourself. What's going on? We're standing here in our new space in the Illuminarium. My name's Scotty Soltronic. So this system is designed to be as efficient as possible. It's everything that you need to live on the planet. It's the mechanical system. This is our prototype, so I'm going to take you through our thoughts and concepts on how to take each system. There's five systems that we're focusing on in here. Water grid, the food grid, the gas grid, the power grid, and the sewer grid. We want to rethink the grid and how we interact with it. What is the grid? I want to embrace city officials, people from the municipalities who work in these organizations to try to figure these systems out. I want to embrace and encourage other scientists to come and participate in this journey of figuring out the most efficient way to live on the system. We start with our water. This is a closed loop water system. This is for demonstration purposes. So imagine, you have to use your imagination a tiny bit. The rain falls into the rain gutter. It comes down here. It's coming off of our roof. It's kind of dirty. It's got a lot of debris in it. It's got leaves and sticks. So we catch the leaves in this. This is our first filter. You can take this thing off. So I can clean this thing out, get the leaves out, clean it out, put it back up. And you have a double filter. It's a double filter, yeah. This is pretty nice. Okay, so the double filter, this thing goes into, into this device. Imagine that this has a tube on it, like this. And at the bottom of the tube is a valve that you can open up. So the water flows into this tube and fills it up. This tube has a racquetball inside of it. The racquetball floats to the top, and when it gets to the top, it plugs the hole. So it fills this up with dirty water, and once it's full, then the water starts to flow past and flows into our water catchment system. This is called the first filter. It's actually our third filter, right? But it's another way of filtering out the bird poo and other dust and dirt in the system. So then we fill up our first tank. This is a smaller version at your home. Maybe you want to use a larger tank, whatever this tank is. It could be a 200 gallon, it could be a 500, a 1,000, a 2,000 gallon, whatever you want. We're using a five gallon bucket. It works the same way. The water fills this up. Once it gets to here, it flows in here. So we're capturing more sediment in here. It flows into a four-stage filter. And this is a simple filter that you can build yourself out of a five-gallon barrel that will take rainwater and turn it into potable water that you can then pump into with your hand or you can pump it with a electric pump into your sink. The water flows out of your sink and it goes into the drain, out of the drain, into your garden. In this garden, you're growing rooted veggies. Out of this garden, we flow into this bucket. This flows into this bucket and this pump pumps it back up to the top. back through the system again. This has, um, this has a little thing on it. When the water starts to go up, the pump turns on. So you put your hand right there. When this goes down, it turns off. So it flows up and then it just keeps pumping anytime there's water in here. So we're trying to solve the problems of food, water, shelter. This is our water issue. So we're gonna look at food a little bit. We're growing spirulina here. In the microscope, we have a live culture of spirulina that you can actually look at. The interesting things about spirulina, and there's many, is that it grows really fast. It's a single-celled organism. It's one of the first little like organisms on the planet that takes sunlight and turns it into a protein. It's the first one that kind of figured out photosynthesis. They call it a blue-green algae, but it's not actually an algae. It's a bacteria, cyanobacteria. And it forms a spiral, like a DNA molecule. It forms a spiral and it just keeps getting longer and longer and longer until it breaks. And then they both start getting longer and longer and longer until they break. And they double in size every two to three days. 60% protein. Because it's a single-celled organism, it has no cell wall. 
such a small, simple organism that when you eat it, you can absorb it into your bloodstream through osmosis. There's no breaking down the way you would break a piece of chicken down in your stomach. You have to secrete enzymes that break that down and you expend all this energy in order to make energy. Right? Going through the Krebs cycle and creating ATP and making energy for your body to run on. Spirulina goes straight into your body. It's bioavailable. Yeah. It's really easy to grow. So you too can grow this system. And it grows and it doubles every couple of days and you go in and you harvest it and you put it in your smoothie. Once I fill this fish tank, I'm gonna start harvesting about 10 grams of spirulina every day that I'll add to my smoothie. We're, we're looking at food, water, shelter. How do we deal with food? How do we tackle that? It takes a lot of energy to grow food. This is an aquaponic system. What we're doing here, this is a symbiotic scenario that you might see in nature that we've reproduced. We're growing fish in this barrel. The fish grow and they eat and they do what fish do. They do what we all do. They shit and piss in the water and they make an excellent medium to run across the roots of our veggies. Right here we want to grow leafy things because the root goes in and it just sits there and gets water and makes giant leaves. It doesn't use any of its energy to grow a root system. It just sits there and sucks water and creates massive blooms of lettuce and kale. Just the, the plants clean the water, the water goes back into the fish and the fish do their thing and the cycle continues. Fish grow, plants grow, plants clean water. So it's pretty simple. So the thing that the fish need, they need fish food. We feed them spirulina and we feed them worms. All of these systems have three criteria. Simple, anybody needs to be able to build it. It needs to be inexpensive. It can't be some crazy thing that no one can afford. Well, that's great that you can have that, but I can't. It needs to be inexpensive and you need to be able to find the parts anywhere in the world. They need to be ready, readily available. So we're using things that you can find. Barrels, a lot of PVC pipe, buckets, 55 gallon drums, IBC totes. It's all simple stuff. So this is the simple, most simple worm house on the planet, right? The way it works is you take a bucket, you drill holes in the bottom of the bucket, you take another bucket, you put your material, whether it's cardboard or newspaper or leaves or whatever you have around, you put your worms in there, a handful of worms, and you throw them in. And then you put this bucket on, you put more newspaper and cardboard. Then you put this bucket on, you put more organic material, whatever you want. And you just keep stacking them. But they have these holes in the bottom. And what the worms do is they eat all that paper and organic material, they create worm castings and they climb up through the holes and they just keep eating and climbing up and eating and climbing up. So when you're done, you pull these apart and now you have worm castings. And these worm castings are really a valuable resource right there because that's where you're growing veggies that require dirt. So you put them right here. And you put the worms because they just keep multiplying and reproducing and multiplying until your buckets are so high and you have so many worms, you take some and put them in and feed the fish with the spirulina. So now we're growing another, uh, our own source of protein that we want to eat. But they're doing it with our food scraps and our paper and our spirulina. They're just better at that. The other missing pieces we have are how do I cook my food? How do I prepare my food? How do I make hot water? How do I make hot air? How do I protect myself? How do I create my shelter? So the next thing we're going to look at is how do we cook our food? Different ways that we can cook our food. This is a solar concentrator. What it does is it takes the sunlight and focuses it on a point like a magnifying glass. This thing comes apart, it's mobile, and you can cook bacon on this thing. The only problem with this cooker is it only works when the sun is shining. It has its downfalls, but 
Anytime the sun is shining, this thing's good to go. You can boil water on it, cook a steak on it. You'll burn your steak if you're not careful. And even though I can burn wood to do the same thing, I'd rather use the wood in the form of building materials or use that wood as uh, organic matter, as, as carbon, to do something else. Maybe grow mushrooms or mulch and put into my garden or make a hot tub. You know what I mean? Like there's other things I'd rather do with wood than burn it. This is a very similar concept. Instead of a solar concentrator that's focusing on a single point, this is a solar concentrator that's called a solar trough. It's focusing all of the energy on this pipe. So you take your water, you run your water through this pipe, it sits in this pipe, you face this thing exactly to the sun, the sun hits it and reflects all this area onto a line. Instead of a point like the dish, it focuses it on a line. And this gets really hot, really fast. So this is about one cup of coffee. So you wait for this thing, you set it out in the sun, you wait 10 minutes and you have hot water, you open this valve and make your coffee. So this is one way to heat hot water. What if the sun's not shining, right? Well, when you go back to the sink, your food scraps, your water goes into the um, garden here. Your food scraps go into a bucket. We take those food scraps and we put them in this. This is a biogas generator. It's a methane digester. It's an anaerobic methane digester. Through an anaerobic process using manure and water with the lack of oxygen, these bacteria break down your food scraps and the manure and they turn it into gas. The gas comes out here, right? You turn this nozzle, and again, these are simple parts, a 55 gallon drum and a bunch of PVC and some tubing and some brass fittings that you can buy at Harbor Freight. Okay, it's from China. It's very exotic pieces right here, right? Okay, so what happens, you turn this thing on, you put your food scraps in here, you digest it down. A couple weeks later, gas starts coming out of here. We take this thing, we plug it in here, we turn it on, and we fill this bicycle inner tube up with methane gas. The bike inner tube, after a few days of putting food scraps in there, really keeping the temperatures optimal and putting food, the right organic matter into this thing, the bicycle tube inflates and it gets to a point where it's full and you take it off, turn this thing off, you take it over because you want to make some coffee or you want to cook some bacon. You hook it into your stove, you turn it on, and you got a barbecue running off of your own food scraps. This is an open source design. This is on the internet. It's called Solar Cities Biogas Anaerobic Methane Digester. That's a mouthful. They need to work on that name. It's open source and anyone can make it. It costs less than a hundred bucks. What about our pump? We need to pump our water back up. We need some electricity. I want some lights. I want to listen to some music. I'm like a dude in the world. I got to have my electricity. How do we do it? Right here. It's simple. This is your like classic 45 watt solar array from Harbor Freight. It's 180 bucks. It's really simple. All the solar panels connect together. They all connect into this. Yeah, they connect into here. Each one has a positive and a negative. They all connect together. You can't hook it up wrong. You plug the solar panels into the solar panel, the battery into the battery. You hook this thing onto the battery. And now you can turn those lights on and off. The switch is right here. We're running 12 volt lights off of our solar array right here. You have a finite amount of water, right? How are you gonna use that water? We got, let's say, 55 gallon drum of water. How are you gonna use it? You gotta shower, you gotta cook, you gotta clean. You gotta like take care of some business. Your animal needs to drink, right? It's like you have this much water. So 
So how are you going to use that? If you go in and take a 40 gallon hot water shower, you just, you got 15 gallons left. You're almost out. So how do we use it? Same thing with the power. So if I have this much power, technically I could run the stove. I could only run the stove for a few minutes, right? Not even a full hour. The stove would just kill this thing. So I want to use these other techniques to cook my food, heat my water, heat my shower. There's other ways to do this. I want to use this electricity for specific things that need electricity, like my pump that's pumping my water, like my lights, these lights. This is a deep cycle battery, a marine battery, a lead acid marine battery. Get these at Costco for 80 bucks. Here's a standard work light. 500 watt work light, you buy it at Home Depot, you plug it into the wall, it runs on 120 volts AC, just like every construction site, you see these there everywhere. It's a big, bright work light, right? It's 500 watts. To put that into perspective, our sound system that's behind us right now and all these people that are partying, they're probably not even using 500 watts on that entire sound system. These LEDs are 12 watts. Our bigger LEDs are 35 watts. This thing's 500 watts. So this, what we did, we took the light bulb out. We took the metal out, we took it apart, and we put one of these light bulbs in. It's a high intensity xenon light bulb. It's like the ones that you see in a BMW or a Mercedes. It's the same light bulb. And we put this in the back, we put the light bulb out the front. So what I can do is plug this into my battery. This is 12 volts DC, direct current. It's different than this, it's AC, alternating current, 120 volts, alternating current. This is coming directly from the batteries. There's no inverter, there's no inversion. So now this light, this work light, has very similar lumens to the work light of 500 watts. This is 35 watts. And it also runs DC. What that means, it's important, is that this thing is running directly off the battery. If I have to go through my inverter to then plug in my 120 volt light, I lose 30% of my electricity in that conversion through the inverter. 25 to 30%. So not only are we using 35 watts versus 500 watts, we're saving 30% by going direct using DC current from the battery. We're the rethink tank and we're rethinking all of these things. And we're inviting people to bring their ideas and their concepts. This is a concept that we saw from a guy named Dan Rojas. He's the guy that I learned this from, Green Power Science. There's other wizards. This thing is made by a guy named Scott Frank. He's from Salt Lake City. This is his design. So we're trying to take open source concepts, implement them together, and show people how to do it, help people do it. We don't make any money, don't make any money off of these, they're open source. So our money is not coming from this. Our money comes from art. We're artists, we build and sell art. We've touched on the water and the food and the power grids. Now we're looking at the sewer grid. And this is an important concept. It's a great idea in theory where we don't want to have to deal with it. It's a convenience. So we flush it down the toilet and it goes to these people who are experts at dealing with it. And they've been really good at doing that. And they've figured out really amazing techniques to deal with our shit. And they deal with so much shit. It's ridiculous. I have mad respect, a lot of respect for these individuals who have developed these systems. You can't deny the fact that it's not the most efficient system to poop in our water and send it down a pipe that's most likely made at some point of steel, which takes an incredible amount of resources to dig out of the ground and smelt and turn into a pipe right there. And it takes a lot of engineering, and it takes a lot of people, and it takes a lot of natural resources. Why would we send these thousands of miles in a network to all these houses when we can have a system like this that produces enough nitrogen to put on our veggies to grow food to support us? This particular system is really interesting because it's from Europe, 
The guy that designed it is kind of the godfather of the composting toilet. He's been doing it 40 years, and he started a company called Clivus Millstrom that if you talk to anyone who knows anything about composting toilets from the 70s on, knows of the Clivus Millstrom toilet. It was the like de facto composting toilet manufactured by this Swedish man. He's come up with this design that's like revolutionary. It's totally changing the game. And I saw it at a music festival in Portugal. I was there, 40,000 people at this music festival, and they had all these composting toilets. I was like, how, how does this work? There's 40,000 people here, there's no porta-potties. Where's everybody, everybody gonna take a shit? This is gonna be a mess. They had 200 of them, they had a lot of them, but they didn't have your like standard thousand porta-potties at an event of that size, or even more. So I investigated these porta pot these, these composting toilets. I really got into it. It was like, okay, this toilet, instead of servicing 12 people, like a standard porta potty services 140 people. And instead of creating this blue goo, this stuff that gets shipped out to the wastewater treatment facility and dumped in for them to deal with, it creates a liquid. And that liquid ferments, stay with me here, ferments and turns into nitrogen rich uh, liquid that you can then spread on your vegetables, right? I know it's hard to believe because we're afraid of pathogens and we're afraid of bacteria and we don't want to die and we've got heavy metals and we've got pharmaceuticals and we're afraid of these things. But have no fear, this system, which is being used in Europe and has eight years of statistical data done on it with 40,000 plus people, is here to save the day. So here's how it works. Let's look at it really quick. The basic concept is you fill it up to here with microbes. Microbes are microorganisms that are designed to eat shit. They eat shit. That's what they do. They break it down. And in the process of eating poop, they release gases and chemicals. The composting process takes a while. When you're composting your veggies, when you're turning your compost pile, it takes weeks to create really good compost because you're you have to manage this, you have to bring it up to temperature, you have to watch it, you have to add the right components and flip it and keep it aerated and warm and it takes time. This, no. Completely different scenario. These are microbes, these are organisms that come in and eat your shit. It's like a dinner table. It's like Thanksgiving dinner versus sitting around waiting for the daisies to grow. This is like happening immediately. So when you have the right microbe mix and the right content of urine and human fecal matter, pee and poo mixed together, they make up the perfect liquid scenario for these microbes to jump on board and they just start mowing it down. And I didn't believe it. I was skeptical. I was like, I don't believe it. The thing's gonna fill up. It's gonna fill up, I know it. I'm gonna watch this. There was 200 people on my team at this event. I was there for six weeks using this toilet. For six weeks I used this toilet and watched it. And I was like, 200 people on my team with two of these toilets. We're gonna fill that thing in a day. We're gonna crush it. Every day I went out, I looked in the toilet, the pile was gone. I would come back and the next day you'd see it, it would start to pile up in the day and it was like kind of piling up. Every time I'd go back, the pile was gone, it was down. These microbes are immediately mobilizing, breaking it down. What they do is they release a gas that we vent out the top. We vent out any of the odors and smells get vented out the top and they don't smell. You go in these, it's not like a porta potty because there's not rotting matter. A porta potty is an anaerobic environment. You're pooping in this blue goo, trying to mask it with all these perfumes. You're just exacerbating the problem that your shit can't breathe and it's, it's molding and it's putrefying and it's turning into uh, this ridiculous odor. This is an aerobic environment. There's air and these microbes are creating gases that are being released and they generate a liquid. The liquid flows down through the pile. As it's flowing down through the pile, these microbes are breaking it down and they're taking all of the elements and they're releasing toxins and storing toxins. And toxins are being sequestered in this pile and they're releasing they're releasing everything that comes from a leachate in compost. There's a lot of nitrogen, phosphorus, depending on what you put in here. 
is leaching out into this. We catch it here. It comes out and we go into this tank. And this is actually the tank from Building Man. It's full of the leachate from our last music festival from all the participants. It's not full, I only got about this much. But what's really cool about this is once I saw the system in Europe, I decided I wanted to bring it back and build it at our ranch, at the Jankstar Ranch. So I tried to find this old guy. He wasn't there at the music festival and I wasn't able to get the, their contact info. And I left, I went back to the States and I couldn't find him. I sent an email to the email that I got and I didn't get a response. I sent a couple emails to this email that I had received about the toilet and how to find this guy and he didn't respond. He finally responds and basically just says, go talk to my son. So he gives me his son's number, I call his son. I have a conversation with his son, I want to build this toilet, can you come help me? He agreed. We flew his son to Building Man last year and we invited the health inspector from Grand County. He came and he checked out the system. We built it, we checked it out, and we started a year-long white paper peer-reviewed study with the health department on this liquid that's coming out, this leachate, and what's in it. So I've already done my first test. It came back positive for both E. coli and bacteria, which isn't surprising. It needs to sit for 90 days. Once this is sat for 90 days, I'll do, we're gonna look at it for one year and we'll have like statistical data on what happens to this at certain temperatures over a certain period of time. But the cool thing is, is the health department's on board and they want us, they want the Jake Stars to build two more of these for other health inspectors at their cabins. So. It's like people are embracing this concept. They get, they, he saw it and he gets it. It's like, oh, this is better. It doesn't use any water. Standard toilet uses a couple of gallons, sometimes six gallons of water every time you flush it. We live in a desert. It doesn't make sense. We're in a drought. California's in a drought. It, this makes sense and it works. So this sort of concludes our cruise through the Illuminarium, through... The, the systems of the smart ship, right? What we're doing now, we want to call out the others. We want to find all of our friends who know about these other systems, who know a little bit more than we do about the system. We want to bring them here and welcome them here to come and play with these systems. I've got rolls and rolls of paper. We can pontificate about the impossible system. And we're gonna come up with better and better solutions. I think this is a better solution. I think that's a better solution. I think that's a better solution, better solution, better solution, better solution, better solution, better solution. And there's 17 systems and I think we can constantly and never end our improvement on all of them. There'll always be improvement. So that's us, that's the space. And that's what we're working on and people showed up, people are into it. So we're gonna keep trying to hold on to this wave and ride it and create a space where people can come do their thing.